So three Death Stranding fashion mods for RimWorld popped up on the Steam Workshop and I was thinking they would make for a really cool Death Stranding inspired run where we have Toxic Fallout as a permanent game condition. Toxic Fallout is very similar to the Toxic Rain in Death Stranding which basically ages everything it touches really rapidly. With Toxic Fallout if anyone is outside and they're not wearing the appropriate equipment they'll start getting poisoned and if their toxic buildup gets too high then they will die. So Toxic Fallout is going to be permanent. We're also going to be getting raided every single day on top of the fact that every four days we're going to be hit with the flu as that's kind of relevant right now to offset the fact that we're getting raided every day and we're getting the flu a lot we're going to be getting resource pod crashes every day which could just be any type of resource could be food could be building materials and we also are going to get a ship chunk drop every day we can deconstruct this ship drop for raw materials like steel and components and this is going to be good because i have a lot of late game mods that are going to require a lot of steel and components we're also going to start with the research microelectronics which is pretty far down the tech tree it's barely past the naked brutality start but yeah we're not going tribal here my last tribal run ended in tragedy as probably will this one this is the hardest remote run i've ever done as for our storyteller we're gonna go with this custom storyteller gunnery sergeant hartman enemy raiders are harder to kill and therefore they will be easier to capture so we'll be recruiting more colonists probably or we'll be selling them off as slaves and it says that danger is followed up by each other which i've played the storyteller before and a lot of times you will end up getting double raided so maybe every day we're gonna get raided by two people at once so i'm not sure exactly how that's going to work but yeah, as always we're going to be playing on the hardest difficulty merciless and we're also going to crank up the amount of death straining factions that are on the map up to 45. as far as our start we're going to start on this mountainous tile which is fairly close to a bunch of porter faction outposts we got six porter outposts that we can easily trade with these guys are allied to us being near friendly factions won't change the fact that we're getting raided every single day though it will just make it easier for us to trade goods off and potentially buy some nice stuff and there are some nearby homo just stalled assuming we do want to attack them also the average temperature here is a cool 41 degrees fahrenheit and it can drop down to 6 fahrenheit which is going to be fairly cold since this run is going to be pretty rough we're going to need a fairly strong character to start out with and with the prepared carefully mod we can customize our starting character and give them stuff like burning passions for shooting which is going to increase the points value of our character and i think we're going to start with 2000 points which is slightly higher than a normal character would be but not by much if we look at a randomly generated character this person Person's worth 1330 points, 1420, 1396. 1170, 1360. Okay, these people all suck. 1500, there we go. Although this person has kidney diseases. 1600 on Quentin Palisano, which is weird. This guy does not seem that good. 1670 on this guy, and yeah, you kind of get the point. Colonists are usually ranging from like the 1200 to the 1600 range. Oh, and actually, he was wearing a bunch of clothing. That's why. If we take off her scarf, and I think that was like her shirt, she's only worth 1320. This childhood young agent seems a bit broken as it only gives positive bonuses. There are a few other ones that do this, and I'm not sure if this is part of a mod or what, but this childhood's going to give us a baseline four extra shooting four bonus melee four planting and two social and i kind of like this adulthood drug lieutenant which gives him four plants and a whopping seven in medical and social the only drawbacks is that he can't cook he can't do art and he cannot clean not being able to do art and cleaning are fine but the fact that he can't cook i think might mean that he can't butcher creatures as well which definitely could be a problem and we might have to buy food from nearby factions right away because eating butchered raw meat's fine but you don't want to eat the entire animal pretty sure there's a lot of drawbacks to doing that as for traits we get three free ones and the fourth one costs us an extra 100 points a fifth one's going to cost 250 points so we're just going to stick with four he's going to be a sharpshooter which gives him a little bit of extra move Movement, less aiming time more shooting accuracy although it makes him work slightly slower and sharpshooter is a class he gets a couple extra abilities and as he gets xp towards that class his movement speed will go up his aiming time will be reduced and he will get more shooting accuracy he's also tough so he takes 50 percent less damage and he's trigger happy so he has a lot less aiming time and just gets a little bit less shooting accuracy which isn't that big of a deal and i decided for the fourth trait we're gonna have him be super immune so he recovers from illnesses quicker we still have 800 60 points to spend and we're going to want to give him burning passions for shooting which that costs 60 points but he's going to level up shooting quicker probably eight points of construction as at that point there is no chance to botch anything and if you botch something you lose a bunch of resources and you have to rebuild whatever you were building i think two points of mining would be okay or maybe we actually want more in mining and much less in planting because i don't know if we can actually plant outside with a toxic fallout i think maybe we can only grow indoor crops and that's not really going to help us a lot at the start i guess we'll just not give him a burning 
new passion for plants and we can't actually go any lower in planting because our backstories combined bring us up to eight planting but instead of having a burning passion for planting we'll just put that in mining and we'll give him up to eight mining and at eight mining he will get a hundred percent yield from mining resources anywhere from four to eight it's pretty decent but if you go below four you start losing a lot of mining yield it's just that with eight mining not only are we going to get more mining yield but we're also going to mine quicker and now i'm thinking like what do we want to spend the rest of our points on we're going to need at least i believe two crafting in order to make a bow and eight medical seems to be a good cutoff point to where you're getting a decent treatment quality decent healing speed and decent surgery success chance since we're only at 1550 points we'll give him another trait jogger and that will bring him up to almost 1800 this makes him a bit quicker and i like this trait because in the game his job is to deliver cargo so i feel like this is a trait that he would actually have if we were trying to mimic the character of sam bridges we still have 200 points left and maybe we'll give him a burning passion for construction so he'll level up that skill quicker as construction is always going to be nice to have and maybe we'll just dump the rest of his points into shooting if we bring him up to 14 shooting that's going to bring our point total to 2000 and with that we're almost ready to go in order to make this even possible we started out sam with a hazmat mask and a hazmat suit combined these lower his toxic sensitivity down to zero percent which means that he will not be affected by toxic fallout although they do lower his movement speed by 0.5 which does cancel out his jogger trait and lowers his movement speed by a little bit more on top of the fact that his hazmat mask does lower his global work speed by 10 percent and this hazmat gear offers virtually zero protection against bullets and like melee weapons this isn't rust and yeah aside from preventing toxic fallout this hazmat suit does not offer us really any bonuses also i scoured over the entire map and there is currently zero wood on the map nor are there any animals on the map and i guess the toxic fallout has already been going for some time it looks like we're gonna have to rely on trading right off the bat in order to get even some basic resources and the only real resources we have access to that we can trade are like this compacted machinery and if we mine this out we can get some components which yeah we're gonna need components but even more than that we need to eat one thing that is also nice about sam having a burning passion for mining is he gets this 14 bonus moodlet while he is mining burning passion for his work and he's gonna get this while he's doing other stuff that he likes such as construction i believe medical i'm not too sure on that one and i'm not too sure about shooting either but yeah we mined out for the compacted machinery there is one more back here and after that we should have enough components so we can trade off in order to get at least some basic stuff from this nearby yankee outpost and it's only going to take us 0.2 days to get there or i guess 0.1 days now while we're on the road we're moving at a fairly quick 37.2 tiles per day and it looks like we're going to make it there before sam's food meter gets down to zero which is fairly important as he is ravenously hungry right now and we do not want his mood to drop below i guess 35 percent is his minor break threshold if it does he could have a minor mental breakdown at any time for our 10 components they'll give us 177 silver which is not going to make us rich or anything but it will be enough to buy us a little food like for example we could buy 20 chicken meat i did the math and for food it's actually much more efficient to buy a package survival meals versus if we just buy like raw meat basically 18 chicken meat is worth one package survival meal in terms of nutrition and 18 chicken meat costs 51 silver whereas one package survival meal only costs 34 silver and on top of the fact that colonists do not like eating meat raw so it's kind of a no-brainer on that one and we can pick up two package survival meals on top of this normal quality recurve bow they have for 93 dollars and that's gonna be pretty much all of our silver with a little silver we do have left over we'll grab a little bit of chocolate and that's going to give us some nutrition and it's also going to provide us with a little bit of recreation with that we'll head back to base it's going to take us 0.3 days and i guess we won't have to rest on the road which is great sometimes if you're close enough to base and it does get to nightfall colonists will just power through instead of having to sleep on the road and sleeping on the road just kind of sucks especially when you don't have a bed roll sam is really low on cover right now and he would really like to sleep in an actual bed he was however able to eat one of the packaged survival meals and his food is up to 86 percent which did boost his mood a bit he is no longer ravenously hungry sam made it back to base and there's a ruins over here that we're going to inhabit we just have to wall it in so we're going to start deconstructing some of these steel walls and they're going to give us four steel a pop that one only give us three i guess same with that one and there's also like this steel table that we can deconstruct for a decent amount of steel we do need to do this fast though as sam's rest meter is really low He's at 14% and he's starting to get drowsy and yeah, now he's tired. He really wants to lay down. Just from deconstructing that table, we got 37 steel and this next one gave us 21, which will definitely be enough in order to make him his own bedroom. We'll deconstruct this table as well and we'll have him wall in his bedroom with steel walls, which he is building very fast. And holy crap, we're getting raided already. Oh, and we got our 
Whoa, this is a massive cargo pod. We just got 29 food from it. That's actually awesome. It's completely random what type of cargo pods we get, and it could have been something useless, like, I don't know, cloth, which wouldn't have been useless. Like, we could have traded off, but 29 food's amazing. And the dude that's raiding us is Pitts, who has a Porter Prod, which is a melee weapon. He also brought us four medicine as well, which is really high tier medicine. This is going to be really nice to have when Sam does eventually get sick with the flu. The raider's not coming to attack us yet, and in the meantime, we're going to have Sam wall in his bedroom. No. Not time to sleep, Sam. The raider's not coming to attack us yet, though. And in the meantime, we're going to have Sam roof in his bedroom, and we're going to have him build his bed. And again, we have no chance to botch this, which is absolutely amazing. And he built a normal steel bed. And steel beds are not as comfortable as wooden beds, as you can imagine. But 0.75 comfort's not terrible, and it gives him 100% rest effectiveness. I think wooden beds are slightly more rest effectiveness and slightly more comfort, but it's not by much. But yeah, after building the bed, Sam is getting some much-needed rest. However, the the renegades are now attacking. If we could get him above Drowsy before Pitts, never mind. He's attacking our table. And no, he's gonna kill the table. That sucks. That was the table we were gonna use, but that's alright. We ended up tagging Pitts, who, by the way, has a ranged weapon. I don't know what exactly he's shooting at us. I thought that thing was a melee weapon. Oh, that was close. He almost tagged Porter. Pitts, what are you shooting at, man? I that was not even close. Pitts has a toxic buildup, by the way. It's not that bad because he's only been outside for not that long. But we did tag him a bunch. He should go down fairly soon. The sooner the better, too, because we would really like to capture him and maybe we could turn him into a slave and sell him off. Sam is missing a lot of shots himself. This guy's kind of behind cover. We only have 11% chance to shoot him, I guess, because, yeah, cover and the wall does hurt our chance of hitting him. We'll just get him in closer range. And this gives us a 31% chance of hitting him, which is much better. Come on, just hit Pitts one more time. Like, he hit so many shots right away and then Dude, what is that? And Sam got tagged. It's only a burn though by the Porter Prod. It's not that bad. At least it's not bleeding or anything. So I was watching Sam miss a bunch of shots in a row and I didn't know why, but even where Pitts is standing, the game considers him in cover. There's only a 17% chance to hit him here and he ends up tagging Sam four times total, which doesn't end up doing that much damage as the Porter Rod really isn't all that strong and Sam is tough. Since Sam needs to rest and Pitts has tons of injuries, I think we're just gonna let him die. We could probably save him, but we don't have a prisoner room made yet so we would just have to make Sam's room the prisoner room and Sam still really wants to sleep right now he is very tired his mood is terrible as well he's in serious pain we need to let him rest sorry Pitts we're gonna strip your gear and we're gonna grab all this I believe we can sell it all off to a nearby faction because Pitts wasn't dead when we stripped him of it if he was dead the gear would be tainted and they wouldn't want to wear it Sam's gonna eat a little chocolate which is gonna give him a boost to recreation I don't think much because he only has three chocolate well that wasn't actually that bad he got rid of his little recreation mood for now at least and now we're gonna have him 10 up his injuries which is gonna give him a nice boost to medical skill he's at 5.8k and that gave him like what was that 400 xp he has four wounds of 10 so that's around 1600 xp for that and though we didn't get the best quality 10s on these wounds they're not that bad they only did two damage like his torso so his torso is at 38 out of 40 which is gonna heal up really quickly and it's not really hurting him too much after resting a few hours we're gonna have sam haul pits off to the corner over here in this stockpile zone as every time sam walks by him there is a chance he will get a negative moodlet seize corpse which like right now thankfully he didn't get it but yeah we don't want him walking by that corpse we'll also have him go grab these simple meals which are deteriorating quickly we need to get those inside asap even though they will spoil in a couple of days assuming we don't refrigerate them after a few hours sam's injuries got fully healed up and now the only issue is that his recreation is really low he is now meditating and that's giving him a nice recreation boost however he needs multiple types of recreation because colonists get bored doing the same thing over and over and they build up tolerances to that type of thing which basically just means meditation is going to be less and less effective as that tolerance goes up and yeah though it will fall over time it's good to give them multiple types of recreation so we plop this horseshoe pin outside and we'll probably want to drop like a chest table later on for now though it's not really a big deal though as his recreation is almost full it's at 85 percent and that gives him a mood lit buff recreation fully satisfied 10 bonus mood so yeah his mood's doing pretty good and i think right now we want to focus on building up that kitchen so we can refrigerate these meals we have 1.8 days to start refrigerating them and outside our base drop two ship chunks if you guys remember these ship chunks drop every single day and they should give us a good amount of resources and some components 
Looks like another day has officially passed and we're now getting raided yet again by it looks like just one guy again and on top of his normal equipment like the porter prod, the balaclava, and the mule uniform, he's also brought us a little bit of pemmican or if it's only like one fifth of a survival meal but he's also brought us five flake which does have market value of 14 bucks a pop and speaking of money, Sam ended up deconstructing the first ship chunk for 30 steel and 8 components which is amazing. We're again gonna need all the components we can get. The second one gave us pretty much the same and extra component on that one and that is a lot of components that we just got. Unfortunately for us it looks like Lee is actually inside our bedroom and he set our bed on fire. I don't really know how he set a steel bed on fire although I guess in Rimworld steel is flammable. Um, I never quite got how that worked but yeah we need to take this guy out. We've hit three shots in a row now. Sam is being much more accurate here. There's a four shot and I don't know what Lee's doing. He's taking cover. Could have Sam just extinguished the bed. And yeah, I don't know what Lee's doing. He's wandering around. Oh, we killed Lee. And that's unfortunate because we can't really sell off his gear. There's really no point of stripping him. And yeah, after seeing his dead body, Sam did just get a Observe Corpse Moodlet debuff, which gives him negative four mood for 12 hours. And yeah, he just got another one for seeing the other dead body that was over there in our corpse pile. So now he gets a negative six Moodlet for 12 hours. But yeah, let's haul all the stuff inside his bedroom, which his bedroom should not be the place that we store goods. Each thing that's on the ground lowers the beauty of the entire room by quite a bit and he currently has the mood lit awful bedroom for negative four mood. We also ended up getting a resource drop for a decent amount of bird skin and we can sell this off to the nearby colony. 205 bird skin should sell for quite a lot though for now it's just gonna make his room uglier. To fix the issue of Sam's ugly room we're gonna have him deconstruct these four ship chunks I guess that dropped in the bottom left of our territory. I guess it's just random how many ship chunks drop each time but we're gonna need the steel not only to build another room we're also gonna need a heat wave has begun. I don't know if that's really going to affect Sam at all. His hazmat suit and helmet combined with, I guess he was able to put on a cloth mule uniform below his hazmat suit. And actually this thing offers even more insulation against the heat. He can be comfortable in temperatures of 236 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat wave is not going to get us above like 110, 120. So he'll definitely be fine. And yeah, this mule uniform actually increases global work speed by 25%, which is really cool. And it will help Sam to deconstruct these ship chunks quicker. I wonder if he can grab all this at once no he can't carry it all before we do anything with those materials we have a trader that visited us who will apparently buy our flake and this balaclava for 73 bucks We'll sell him this porter prod as well for 40 and we'll sell him all three components and we'll just take his silver. After deconstructing the ship chunks, we have 122 steel and that's not going to be quite enough to build electricity plus refrigeration. So we're going to start deconstructing all these steel walls. Originally I was thinking we should make this our base location at least temporarily, but I think if we're going to do stuff like set up electricity, we're going to want to do that at a more permanent base location. After deconstructing all those walls, we're at around 200 steel and that's not going to be quite enough. Sam's pretty tired though and so that's all we're going to do for today and we're just going to let him get some rest before we get raided in six hours because yeah i guess we do get raided at 6 a.m every single day also apparently a stack of our simple meals rotted away in storage i'm not quite sure why that was these eight simple meals still have 22 hours left and these nine ones still have a day i'm not sure why they're spoiling at different rates that's kind of weird because they all dropped at the same time and here we go a new day new raid we're getting raided by again I guess just one person and I think the reason why is A we don't have that much wealth yet. It's also really early on we're only on day 3. You don't even start getting raided until like day I want to say 7 or 8. And So I think that's also part of the reason why we've only gotten raided by one person every time. Actually the poor prod has less range and oh no Minnie's casting a spell. Minnie is a technomancer by the way and she has a few abilities. I don't think technomancers are all that effective against humans and uh we killed her. Would have been nice to possibly recruit her. She did have 5 more medicine though for us which is really nice and uh, Sam got another observed corpse negative debuff but yeah, after fending off the raid we're gonna deconstruct more of these steel walls and this should be enough steel now so that we can finally make our refrigerator now the question is where do we want to base there's a few locations I'm thinking of this one to the left has a lot of mud in it though and I think it will be hard to build in the mud although it does look pretty defensible there's only one entrance and there's a steam geyser over here that we can use for a huge source of power already well with I'm not actually sure how much longer the simple meals have I think only a few hours. We've got all the resources over here that we need to build up this refrigerator. The only issue for us right now is this wind turbine is moving really slowly and it's not blocked. I'm not quite sure if there's going to be no wind here or exactly how that whole thing is going to go because yeah we need more power output than 96 watts to power this cooler. It looks like the wind now actually did just pick up and it's outputting enough power to power this cooler. It looks like it's not going to be enough though. And yeah, these simple meals did rot away. All 10 of them at once. That was actually kind of odd. 
This stack of five does have two hours left though, and can the cooler refrigerate this room before it does spoil? I'm gonna go ahead and say no, cause there is a heat wave going on. It's currently 100 degrees outside, and it's only 71 in here, which is not nearly cold enough. We need this to be around, I think, 40 or somewhere around there to be refrigerated, and then 32 to be frozen. The fact that it's so hot outside cause the heat wave makes it harder to cool the inside, cause we only have one layer of insulation on these walls, and that's not really the best insulation. Like if we sack walls here we would have better insulation and yeah there goes our five simple meals well at least we tried we do have a refrigerator set up though so when we do get more meals we should be able to cool them i mean it got down to 58 degrees in here it's much better than 96 outside and it looks like it's day four because yeah now sam got the flu we get the flu every four days and yeah we're getting raided yet again by just one dude again we're gonna have sam tend up his flu let's see if we can get a nice 10 with that really decent medicine 54 percent 10 is not bad his immunity should go up fairly quickly assuming we do give him time to rest after this fight she's not even trying to attack us i feel like i don't know what her goal here is and she's dead. Well, she brought us some more flake. We can use that to sell. And some more pemmican. We are actually completely out of food, so we can't eat that. Speaking of food, actually, it looks like our last resource drop was a bunch of kibble, which usually is meant for animals, but colonists can eat that. It just, they don't like to. As one would imagine, they do not like it, and he now has a negative 12 8 kibble moodlet for 24 hours on top of all these other ones, and I can't guarantee at this point that Sam will not have a mental breakdown, which is not good. If he has a mental breakdown at any point, and we do get raided, then that could be run over, especially when he's sick. And speaking of being sick, he actually got a really nice 10 on the flu, 83% 10 quality, and his immunity is going up fairly quickly. The flu is only at 14%, and as long as his immunity gets to 100 before the flu does, he will survive it. I will say his room is extremely dirty though, and I believe having low cleanliness does affect how quickly people get over the flu or any disease. I think for now this kitchen... Wait, we're getting raided again. Oh, yep, it's 6 a.m. again. That came on quick. I think I didn't really notice because Sam is a lot slower at doing stuff now that he's sick. Well, not a lot slower, but it is a bit noticeable, like he's sort of moving. And ooh, we actually knocked out Django, who, by the way, has a healing enhancer on his torso and has pretty decent traits like tortured artist, fast walker, and he's pretty. Dude will sell for a lot, or we could try to recruit him. You know what? Actually, we could put him in our old room. We just got to bandage him up, and after two bandages, it looks like he will survive. Survive. With that healing enhancer as well, he should heal back up fairly quickly. Sam currently has no bed, so we're gonna have him build another one. Hopefully this one will be better than a normal quality. Ooh, yeah, it's excellent, very nice. The excellent bed gives two extra beauty, 0.18 extra comfort, but the main thing is it gives 14% extra rest, which means colonists sleeping in it will not need to sleep for as long. You may also notice we have five extra fine meals lying around, and I think they got supply dropped in, which I guess if the supply drop drops in fine meals, they drop in less. Fine meals are nice because they give a small bonus mood to whoever eats them. We'll have Sam rest in here for now, as the cleanliness is only at negative 0.6, which isn't that bad. It's still a bit dirty, and actually Sam can't clean it, unfortunately. It still is a bit dirty, and I think there's just some dirt on the ground, which Sam unfortunately cannot clean. He is incapable of cleaning. And oh, we're getting raided yet again at hour 15 by Drew, who by the way is about to engage Sir, our visitor. This guy just randomly decided to visit us, and it looks like he is taking out Drew pretty easily. And yeah, Sir ended up downing Drew, who does have a ton of injuries. He's going to bleed out in six hours. I don't really know if we want to save him. Yeah, we already have one prisoner, and that's enough to manage for now. We're just going to strip him and take all his stuff and let him bleed out. And with that, we're going to end episode one. If you guys did like it and you want to see an episode two, then drop a like on the video. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.